What are the signs that a Muslim truly loves Allah Jalla Jalalu? I don't think you've ever come across a Muslim who says, I don't love Allah. Everyone claims that they have love. But since we're talking about an obligation, and since we're talking about a high part of the religion, we have to test these claims against a series of criteria. And I will share with you perhaps 10 of them. Sign number one, to endure hardship with the beloved. You're willing to put up with a lot when you are going through hardship with the beloved. If you're constantly willing to throw in the towel with the person you claim to love, then it's not really true that you love that person. If you're in a job and you're constantly saying, I think I want to quit, I think I'm going to walk away, I think I'm going to apply for something else, it means you don't love the job, you're not willing to go through hardship. If you're in a relationship, and you're in marriage, and you're constantly saying, you're going to get divorced, we're going to divorce, I don't think we're going to work, work out together, it means you're not willing to endure hardship, that's not a sign of true love. And similarly, a believer who claims love of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, will go through whatever hardship he is put in because he loves his Lord. And that's why Allah, he praised the prophets who loved him the most by saying, as he said about Ayyub, Inna wajadnahu sabira, we found him patient. Ni'ma al-abd, what an excellent servant he was. Innahu awab, he was always returning to us, willing to go through hardship. What type of patience should a Muslim show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom when he puts you through hardship, it is only for your growth, and for your betterment, and for your forgiveness, and your raising of your rank in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Patience through hardship with the beloved. So when your finances plummet, when your health takes a U-turn, when something doesn't go your way, don't just throw in the towel and say, I don't think this religion is for me. I think God hates me, so khalas, I'm walking, I'm calling quits. Lah. That's not a sign of true love. Sign number two is that you belittle your efforts when pursuing the beloved. Isn't that what we do? When you are in love with someone, you never feel that you have given that person their due. Whatever you buy, how much you ever you spend, however much you may sacrifice, you always feel that you haven't given them what they deserve. That is a sign of true love. And similarly, a Muslim who is true to his claims of love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never feels that he has given his Lord what he deserves. And he cannot do that. And that is why our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would finish his salah, what would he say? Astaghfirullah, Allah forgive me, Allah pardon me. As if he just walked away from a sin. That is someone who loves Allah. You feel that you are always falling short towards him. Sign number three is that you never prefer anything over the beloved. You are full, even though you may be hungry. That is if you know that the person you love has eaten. And you feel safe, although you may be at the heart of a conflict zone. That is if you know that the one you love is safe and out of harm's way. As long as they are well, you are well. You put them before yourself. That is a sign of true love. And similarly, one who truly loves Allah Jalla Jalaluhu will honestly put nothing before him. And that's why Allah Jalla Jalaluhu praised the believers, inshallah, like yourselves. He said, amanu ashaddu hubban lillah. And those who believe, they are more intense in their love of Allah. So one who is true to his claims of love, honestly puts Allah Jalla Jalaluhu before everyone, everything else. You test that when you're behind your TV, when you're behind your... PC screen when you are alone and you get that DM, when you get that carnal rage and your desires are riveting through your body, who do you put first? Who do you put first? When the haram business transaction opportunity comes your way, who do you put first? That's how to test if you truly put Allah above everything else. As for sign number four, one who is in love craves those moments of privacy with the beloved. Come on, especially those brothers who are newly wed. You know that there's nothing more appoint, uh, annoying than someone knocking on the door or uh, an appointment that you'd forgotten about or your phone that you forgot to put on flight mode. You know, when you are in love, nothing is dearer to you than being alone with the beloved. That is a sign of love. We can relate to that. And similarly, no exception should a believer be towards his Lord if he claims to love him. You crave those moments of privacy with him, Jalla Jalalu. To be alone, you don't run away from it. Like those people who every time they are alone, they can't hack it. They need to be on social media. They need stimulation from a third party source. They don't like being alone. They drag their feet to salah. They just about make it in two and a half minutes and then back to their social sphere. They need people. They need TV. They need social media. They don't know how to be alone anymore and praise Allah and pray to Him and find comfort in Him. You don't like being alone with Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. Then how can our claims of love be complete? So do you love those private moments with Allah? You test yourself. How do you feel when you hear the iqamah? When you find yourself alone? Is it an opportunity to sin? Or is it an opportunity to be alone? To glorify your Lord where you feel as if the world has just stopped 
orbiting about its own axis. And time has paused as you bow and prostrate and you speak to your Creator. In dua, do you feel the urge to finish it quickly? Or do you feel that it's an endless conversation because you love being in privacy with the Beloved? Sign number five, one who is in love, loves the speech of the Beloved. You love to hear their words. You're always citing what they said. He said this and, and they said that. You're always quoting them. And Ya Allah, when you hear their voice, it's as if your heart begins to flutter. It's about to escape the cage of your chest, right? We relate to this. And similarly, if your claim of love to Allah is true, you will love his kalam, his speech. And what is his speech? The Quran is part of the kalam of Allah Jalla Jalala. And that is why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion, he said that whoever wants to know if he truly loves Allah, then let him present himself to the Quran. If he loves the Quran, then he loves Allah. So you're at the surgery, you're waiting for your surname to be called out, that surname that they can never pronounce right. And then you take out your phone and you begin to recite a page or two. Because you love his kalam, you love his speech. Come on guys, you know how it's right when you get that message from, yani it's a communication in the haram, may Allah protect us. We hope it's a communication in the halal. You go through the same message again and again and again. You've read it like 20,000 times. Why? Because you love the speech of the beloved. May Allah protect us from the prohibited. Why should that be any different to the Book of Allah? Present yourself to the Qur'an. What's your relationship like with the Book of Allah Jalla Jalalu? Sign number six. Those who are in love, they are always remembering huh? their beloved. Who's talking about them? Frequent remembrance. And that's why the Arabs, they say, al muhibbu mafduh, the one who's in love is exposed. Because you're always talking about them. You can't hide it. So until, like, you've been talking about this person so much, is there something we need to know? Always talking about someone or something, it's an indication that you love. That's why the scholars, they say, Malik ibn Dinar, he said, The sign of love is frequent remembrance of something. Because when a person loves something, he speaks about it a lot. And that is why, subhanAllah, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu has obligated us to remember him in the most difficult circumstances. When you are at war, bombs being detonated, bullets being fired, people are falling right, left, right and center. And at the heart of that conflict zone, you are expected to remember him. Why? Because you love him. Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha laqeetum fi'ah O you who believe when you meet a party, meaning in war, fathbutu bi faam wa adhkurullaha kathiran and remember Allah a lot, a lot. La'allakum tuflihun so that you succeed. That's how the believer is with Allah if he claims to love him. Always speaking about him. You don't just wait for a lecture. You don't wait to be spoken to about Allah. It just comes up because that's what lovers do. You can't hide it. It just comes up naturally. It's automatic. Ya Allah said this. La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad. He's coming up in your topic. But if you allow a whole gathering, a whole majlis to go by and his name is not mentioned, our love of Allah has to be called into question. Sign number seven is that you have a sense of ghayra. How do we translate ghayra, brothers? A protective jealousy over the limits of the beloved. You don't like it when the limits of the one you love is, are, are crossed. You don't. Because the reality of love is such that your ambitions have merged with the ambitions of your beloved. And your goals and inclinations in life have disappeared and been replaced with their goals and inclinations. So when you feel that their preferences are not met, their preferences are laughed at, their limits are crossed, you get upset. No, she doesn't like that. I don't want to do that. She wouldn't like that. And why are you saying that? That doesn't please him. He wouldn't like that. Don't do, don't say that. In their presence or absence. And similarly, if our love of Allah is true, we get upset when his limits are crossed. We have a sense of ghayra, protective jealousy to see people disobeying Allah Jalla Jalalu as they inhale his air and eat from his resources and use his limbs. These are from Allah, it's alone. And walk under his ceiling and walk above his earth. They get upset. No, that's haram. You shouldn't be doing that. In their merciful and gentle way, they are enjoying what is good and they forbid what is evil. And where is that emanating from? From love. From love because you have protective jealousy over the limits of the one you love. And that's why Muslim narrates that Aisha said, never did the Prophet wasallam avenge himself when he was harmed. He never avenged himself. It was only when he saw the limits of Allah being crossed that he wanted to avenge for the sake of Allah. Don't allow the limits of Allah to be crossed. Minimally, you will walk out of that gathering. Don't sit with the people who are wasting their time in haram. Sign number eight, you are so upset if you are in love when you miss out on the opportunity to draw closer to the beloved. Sorry? Maybe it's an occasion that you forgot. Maybe it's an opportunity. 
whatever it may be, and you really find ways to compensate, that's because you are in love. Ya Allah, I missed out on this opportunity and I could have drawn closer to him or to her or to them. And likewise is the believer who claims to love Allah Jalla Jalalu. He is upset when he or she misses out on opportunity to draw closer to Allah. And that is why when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he would miss on his night prayer because of illness or because of travel or any other reason, how many rak'ah would he do by day? He would do 12. 12 rak'ah to compensate as if to say, I am sorry that I missed out on this opportunity. I'll make it up by day. That's a person who is true. So you miss out on your daily portion of Quran, you make it up. On your charity, you make it up. You didn't fast your Monday or Thursday or whatever good habit you may be in, you find a way to compensate because you are in love. Number nine, those who are truly in love, they are desperate to meet. Imagine if it was only communication by phone or by message, right? There comes a point where there needs to be a meeting. It's a craving, it's a yearning. And similarly, those who are true in their claims of love to Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, they are desperate to meet Him. And that is why Allah has reassured those believers who feel this. And He said to them, whoever wishes to meet Allah, then rest assured the meeting of Allah is coming. La ilaha Man ahabba liqa Allahi ahabba Allahu liqa Wa man kariha liqa Allahi kariha Allahu liqa Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah will love to meet him. And whoever hates to meet Allah, Allah will hate to meet him. Sign number 10, and that is a sign which is perhaps one of the most important. To practically prove your love to the beloved. And how many times have I seen husband and wife sat side by side and she's filing a application to separate from her husband. And he's weeping, he's on his knees. Honey, don't leave me, please. I love you. She says, what? You love me? You had 15 years, 20 years to prove to me that you love me. All I got was this lip service. No, I'm done with you. You did this and you did that. He said, but I love you. She said, you never proved that. In action speak, now to words. Why should Allah accept any less? We love you, Ya Rabb. Prove it. And that's why Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said in a key ayah here, which is what? قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبِكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ تُنُوبَكُمْ Say to the people, if you truly love Allah, then follow the Prophet That's if you truly love Allah. Follow the Prophet. He will then love you back and he will forgive you. These are 10 signs to look out.